We've been hearing a lot about lengthened biased lifts in recent years and all the hype around them. We're learning more and more about the hypertrophic benefits of training muscles in the lengthened position, but it's clear to me there's a lack of understanding of what makes a lift lengthened biased, mid-range biased, short range biased, or even just a flat resistance profile. Understanding resistance profiles can help you discover the secret of why certain lifts might click well for you and why some lifts might actually feel a bit awkward. This is certainly the case for me, especially in recent years as I've learned more about resistance profiles and strength curves, which I'll touch on towards the end of the video. Ultimately, our internal strength curves are individual to a degree and can become exaggerated through training as our strengths overpower our weaknesses. Our bodies are designed to move as efficiently as possible, which can be counterproductive for developing a well-balanced physique. Optimizing the resistance profiles you train with can train your muscles in positions where another muscle would usually tend to take over, potentially unlocking gains that have been hidden this whole time in stimulating muscles that would otherwise never develop. The resistance profile is how much the bar weighs at various points of the range of motion. So that's the definition of what a resistance profile is. How much does the weight weigh at certain points of the motion that you are training in? You determine the resistance profile by comparing the moment arm to the muscle length. The moment arm is the horizontal distance from the weight to the axis, which I'll touch on here in a second. Here's a visual example of how a moment arm would affect how much the weight weighs at various points in the range of motion. This example is going to be looking into a pendulum style of resistance profile. So the best way to demonstrate this is just to draw a circle and put the axis in the middle. So the axis is where the weight rotates. If you take, say, a T-bar row, for example, the bar is attached at one point down below, and then as you pull up, the angle of the bar changes. So it actually gets lighter as you come up and it gets heavier as you go lower. So to demonstrate that in a visual real quick, if you look at, say, a shortened biased lift, so for example, a hammer strength press, I'll probably demo this in the video, you start a little bit lower, closer to the axis. So the moment arm, the distance between where the pivot point is on the machine and where the actual weight is loaded, uh, it's not that far. The farther you press, so the more you press out, the farther it gets from that axis. So this makes the moment arm uh, longer and it makes the weight feel heavier because it basically is heavier at that point. The farthest you can possibly get away from that point of where the axis is, is what's going to be peak resistance. So that's where the weight would feel heaviest at that point in the range of motion. Not every machine or not every setup goes through this point. There's some that are specifically short biased and some that are specifically lengthened biased. So if you look at a lengthened biased movement, this would start above peak resistance, and then you push or pull up and away from peak resistance. So you start farther away from the axis where there's a greater moment arm, and as you press or pull up, you get closer to the axis and it shortens the moment arm. So this is great to make a lengthened biased movement. So now that we've got some of the nerdy definition stuff out of the way, let's get into the fun part. So the meat and potatoes of today's video is how does this actually apply to our training in a practical way? Let's go through a handful of examples so you guys can actually learn this stuff firsthand. So resistance profiles are generally flat for compound movements, meaning there's no change in the actual resistance that you're using throughout the range of motion, and they're usually on a pendulum for isolation movements, like I just talked about in that example. Machines and other ways of varying your setup can invert this by creating a pendulum resistance profile for compounds and a flat profile for isolations, or alter the resistance profile to make a long, mid, or short biased movement for any lift. For compound lifts, a barbell row is a lift we all know. This has a flat resistance profile. Some of you guys might be confusing the strength curve with the resistance profile. Remember, the resistance profile is external. It's how much does the weight weigh at various points of the range of motion. A barbell row, you're pulling directly up against gravity. You're not changing the bar path at all. So this is a flat resistance profile. There's no pendulum here. You're just moving the bar. To change this, you simply just have to use a machine. What a machine will do here, let's take a T-bar row for example, is change the lift from a flat resistance profile with a free weight to a pendulum style resistance profile. So with a T-bar row, one end of the bar is planted into a specific axis. From here, as you pull, 
the weight that is loaded onto the end of the bar gets closer horizontally to that axis, shortening the moment arm and lightening the load. On isolations, an easy bar curl is a mid to short range biased pendulum style resistance profile. So as you curl, your elbow is going to be the axis. You start off with the weight directly beneath your elbow or just barely in front of it. So the moment arm is very short, which is gonna be the dumbbell or bar in your hand relative to your elbow horizontally. The more you curl up, the farther away the weight gets from your elbow horizontally. So that would make this a mid to short range biased resistance profile. You can try this out for yourselves. It's very easy to understand. A selectorized machine curl creates a flat resistance profile. So you can take a pendulum and turn it into a flat. So remember, this is the opposite of what we did with the barbell row to the T-bar row. The vertical weight stack can give any pendulum or lever style movement a flat resistance profile for constant tension. There's also another example here, which goes beyond just free weights and machines, which would be bands and chains. So accommodating resistance. Bands and chains will always make a movement short biased. An example of this would be a reverse banded hack squat. So this is an example of a reverse band. When you set the band up at the top of a hack squat and you descend down deep into your rep, the band assists you because the band stretches out and generates tension assisting you in that bottom portion of the range of motion. As you stand back up, the band loses its tension and the weight then feels heavier because it has no assistance from the band. You could even take the inverted setup where let's say you're doing a banded leg press and you press into the band, the band will artificially create more weight by adding band tension to the weight that already acts as resistance. And chains are a much less common method of training, but we still see it occasionally. Chains will also create a short biased lift. Let's take a bench for example. If you're descending down, the lower you get and the more your muscles stretch, the deeper you are in that length and position, the more the chains pile up on the ground, which is just dead weight at that point. The more you press up, the more dead weight then comes off the ground and turns into active weight. The same thing applies to a squat. When you're at the bottom of a squat, it turns into dead weight because the chains are on the floor. As you stand back up, that's when the weight becomes active in the chains, and that's when it adds weight to the lift. So any type of accommodating resistance will always be short biased. And there are still two main misconceptions that I see regularly regarding resistance profiles. The first one will be about the position of the muscle versus the biasing of the movement. So there's a difference between long and short biasing versus long and short positioning. The best example I can think of this that we're all familiar with will be an incline curl versus a preacher curl. A lot of people would consider the incline curl to be the length and biased resistance profile when it's actually the preacher curl that has the length and biased resistance profile. To understand this, all you have to do is look at that same example that we started off at with the pendulum. Curls are an isolation movement and they act on a pendulum with your elbow being the axis. In an incline curl, the point where your weight that you're holding is farthest away from the axis, aka your elbow in this case, it is actually closer to the mid-range slash the short position. On a preacher curl, the distance, so the moment arm, the distance from the elbow to the weight is actually going to be in the lengthened position because you can see you're almost at the end of your range of motion near the bottom when that peak resistance is, when there's the largest moment arm. The reason why everybody messes this up is because of the muscle positioning. When you put your elbow behind your shoulder, it lengthens the biceps. And when you put your elbow in front of your shoulder, it actually shortens the biceps. So you're training your muscle in a generally shorter position in a preacher curl, but the resistance profile actually biases it in the lengthened position when your elbow is almost all the way extended. When you're in, in the incline curl, of course, you're stretching out your biceps initially, but the resistance profile actually challenges it a little bit more to the shorter position. So it's not just positioning that you have to take into account. It's actually the resistance profile that will determine if a, if a lift is mid-range, lengthened, or short-range biased. And you also might be wondering why sometimes a lift feels harder in some points than others, even if the resistance profile is flat. This is due to internal strength curves. Strength curves determine how heavy the weight feels throughout the range of motion, which is determined by your internal leverages, which also contain moment arms. It's not just the external resistance profile with the weight and the axis. 
For example, a Smith machine bench press, even with a flat resistance profile, might feel heavier towards the bottom of the range of motion for some lifters, and towards the top for others. For myself personally, the weight feels heaviest at the top near the lockout, which is much less common. This is due to my body biasing my stronger muscles, which in this case is my pecs, so even during lifts with no resistance profiles, a strength curve still exists to some extent, the degree of which is determined by the individual's strengths, weaknesses, and leverages. So if you take a barbell row, for example, like we talked about earlier, the weight just moves up and down in a vertical plane. So with this, you might be saying there's no resistance profile at all, and you'd be correct externally, but internally, if you look at the path that your elbows move in, you can see there's a moment arm between where your shoulder bends and where the weight actually is. So when you first start off the lift, the weight is directly beneath your shoulders. And as your elbows come in and as your elbows tuck, the bar comes farther away from your shoulders, making it much heavier. As your elbows come up, your back muscles, so your traps and your lats, generally speaking in this case, which do the majority of the work on a barbell row, are actually shorter. So when they're in generally a weaker position, the bar is going to feel much heavier and that's why even with a flat resistance profile a lift can still feel heavy or light at various points of the range of motion ultimately strength curves can be complex but the key is to be aware that they exist you can discover your own strengths and weaknesses by keeping an eye on how you perform during various resistance profiles and how heavy the weight feels at various points of a lift even with a flat resistance profile so it's not rocket science it's definitely complex in some ways, but ultimately, if you just keep an eye out and experiment on your own, you can figure out where you're weakest and strongest without fully understanding this as much as an expert would. In case you weren't aware, Barbell Apparel and Rogue Fitness are teaming up to do a $15,000 giveaway. This will consist of a $10,000 home gym from Rogue Fitness with $5,000 of Barbell Apparel workout gear on top of that. So if you need some new gym clothes or you need a new home gym, this is an excellent opportunity. The way it works, it, for every dollar you spend on Barbell Apparel's site, you will actually get an entry to this giveaway. So if you spend $100 on their site, that gets you 100 entries to this giveaway. You can see my collection of Barbell Apparel clothing in the description of this video if you're looking for some new gym gear. Anyways, now is literally the perfect time with the giveaway happening. I hope you enjoyed this style of video. If you did, please let me know, and I will see you guys in the next one.